Hello and welcome to the Pranary session. My name is Sandra Spiri. I'm the CEO and founder of Pranary, which is a practical business school. Today, we're going to talk about how to hire top salespeople without blowing your budgets. And we're going to have a fantastic session today. I'm so excited. Welcome, everybody. And we'll be joined by Sasha uh, from Job Crystal. So this session is a power pack session. It's quick, straight to the point. You know how we do at Pranary? We're a practical business school for entrepreneurs. So what we do is we make sure that we give you just the practical things that you need to learn as an entrepreneur. We'll get started. So my promise to you is at the end of this session, you're going to learn the top mistakes that business owners make when hiring salespeople. The three secrets to hiring and keeping top salespeople, the two telltale signs of mediocre salespeople. And um, my name is Sandra, so I'm the CEO and founder of Pranary, a practical business school for entrepreneurs. So what are the top mistakes business owners make when hiring salespeople? Number one is expecting one person to be good at every aspect of sales. So that is a mistake because a lot of times you're expecting one person to be good at prospecting, they're good at appointment setting, they're good at presenting, they're good at closing, and then they're also good at nurturing the people that the existing customers are nurturing them. That is very, very difficult for one person to do, okay? There are very few people who can do everything, and those are called unicorns, <laughs> okay? But... I bet you that chances are you haven't found a unicorn and it's not very easy to find a unicorn that somebody who can do all of those things very well. So this is a mistake, expecting one person to be good at every aspect of sales. Okay, type in the chat box if this is a mistake that you make. Okay, um, you can type one if that's a mistake that you make. Then number two, okay, number two is Hoping a sales hire will solve your sales problems. Okay? Hoping that a sales hire will solve your sales problems. So a lot of businesses have got products that just really can't be sold. Or you as a founder can't sell what, you, what, you, what you're making or what, you, what you're producing. You can't sell your service. You can't sell your, your product. Then you're hoping that somebody that you hire should be able to solve that. In sales, it's called the ugly baby syndrome. You're like you're saying, oh, but I want my baby to, to look cute. And like, oh, I want to have this, you know, why don't people just sharing pictures of my baby on Instagram and liking and all of that? Like, but it's not an issue of the person who's supposed to take the pictures and like. It's like we need to solve the actual product. Okay. So, good thing about products that we can solve them different from babies, right? <laughs> we can solve that too. But the, the mistake is just thinking that I am struggling to sell my services and then I should just hire somebody. Like, hey, you're a salesperson. Come, <laughs> solve this. <laughs> we are struggling to make money. Help us solve this problem. That's a mistake. The third mistake is not training the salespeople. Okay? How many people think that if I just hire somebody who's really good, I should just let them get on with it. Let them just do what they're supposed to do. I mean, like, really, we hired them. They're good. They came with a good CV. They did very well in the, in the job interview. Why, what should I train them on? But that is a mistake. You need to train your sales people. You need to train even the top sales people. When they come to your company, they might not know how to sell your product. And also, even if they sold a similar product somewhere else, you need to train them on how to solve, to sell your product or your service and listen in every time uh, that you need to have sales calls with them as well as uh, having training sessions and you need to be scheduled in to, solve, uh, to, 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 to train them. So you need to schedule in training sessions. So what are the top uh, mistakes again? The three top mistakes business owners make when Hiring sales people is number one, expecting one person to be good at every aspect of sales. You need to hire people that are be, be 
that will be good at prospecting. Other people will be good at prospecting on appointment setting. And then other people are good at presenting. Other people are good at closing. Or other people are good at presenting and closing. And then other people are good at nurturing your existing customers. So you need to have different people doing different pieces. Number two, hoping your sales higher will solve your sales problems. You need to be able to sell your product. So that as the founders, as the owners of businesses, you should be able to sell your product so that when you hire somebody else, they are helping you do what you already know how to do, which is different from you're bringing them to help you solve what you can't use to sell something which you can't sell. Then number three is not training your sales hires. Okay. This is this is a mistake because you think that oh, because they're trained, they come from somewhere else, they're really good. They should just come into my company and just do their thing. Okay. The three secrets to hiring and keeping top sales people. Number one, break up the sales funnel and let one person handle one thing. Okay, so this is tied to the, the mistake we talked about. So break up the sales funnel. Who are the people that are going to be handling prospecting and appointment setting? That could be one person. That's what they do. That's their job. And when they said that, they can hand them over to you. If you are the presenter and close, then you have somebody that handles that. And you could also have somebody who follows up or it's the closer who follows up. Then once they come into your company as a client, that's not the end of the game, okay? That is now the beginning of even more work and more business. It's much harder to get in a customer. Imagine how much you're paying Google and Facebook to get in a customer. And once they get in, a lot of people don't take care of those existing customers. So you take care of them. So you need somebody who nurtures and continues to look after that. That is what is the role of the account executive or customer success. So customer success is not glorified customer care. It's somebody who looks after your existing customers and helping them to buy more from you, checking in and making sure that their needs are met. A lot of us would actually buy from companies that we buy from, but they don't make it easy for us to buy. Right? To give you an example, right now, I've, I've been trying to get my appointment back to my like it's six months, I need to go to my dentist for just a check. It's so difficult to do. And I'm trying to call them. I think about, okay, I need to find the number. And I need to, then we start looking at calendars. And I've tried it a few times. The calendars didn't sync. And then I heard that my actual dentist moved to another company. Then now my trust is lost. But if they made it easy. Also, they send us newsletters. But I replied to the newsletter and say, can you make me an appointment? Nobody answered. But then now I need to find another dentist i'm like i need to go through that process again okay but they've got a willing customer who they're not reaching out to that's the job of your customer success person your account exec okay number two no, number two secret or number two tip is be generous with the upside if you're hiring people and you don't have a massive budget you need to be generous with the upside so you can hire Salespeople, it's best when you actually put them on a base salary and then they have commissions. That way they are inspired and motivated to go and do more because they're seeing that their effort actually equates to more money for the bonus, more money for Christmas or more money next year. And that is inspiring and motivating for them. But then if you get them on pure commission basis, you can't give them the same commission that you would if you actually gave them a base salary. So you need to be super generous with that. That's very, very important. And there are people who are good salespeople are willing to work on pure commission because if they understand it, this product is good. I understand it and I can sell it. I know where I can sell it. And then my commission is this big. Hire me. I mean, let's do this. And they will work. And provided, again, it's something that you are able to sell and you're helping them to sell more of as opposed to you can't sell it. And then you say, come in on commission and figure out how to sell this thing. Like, it doesn't work like that, okay? So be generous with your upside. Then number three, be clear that it's a sales role. How many times have you seen sales roles disguised as something else, something that it's not? 
how many of you have made that mistake of saying, oh, we're looking for a business development ninja, uh, somebody who can help us build our company and do this and that. And then you get somebody who comes in and say, oh, but then you hire them. And you're asking them, like, hey, where are the sales? They're like, no, 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 I'm doing business development. What do you mean? I work in the background, right? Like, business development in the background. But because your role was not clear that it sells and you, you, you sugarcoated it, that you're confusing your market. You're com confusing the people that you're trying to hire. So when you're hiring salespeople, be clear that we're looking for this type of salesperson or we're looking for a salesperson that would do this. And then in the description, we're actually looking for somebody who can sell or who can prospect and, and uh, prospect and get appointments or somebody who can do, you know, somebody who can do something very specific that you want. So don't hide it because you will attract the wrong people. The other side though, is that if you do get in salespeople, they know they're coming in as salespeople, Internally, now when you're selling, that's when you could like, give them different titles that make it easier for you to sell. As an example, if you just pure sales, like a lot of people are just like, don't want to be sold stuff. So it's like sales people, oh, no, don't call me. No, don't talk to me. Sales, oh my gosh, no. But the, the interesting thing is that everybody buys and nobody wants to be sold. Okay, We are buying stuff all the time, but we just don't like to feel sold. So with that, you can have the titles that actually work. So they are now business development or, uh, or uh, area sales or area um, customer, you know, like customer success manager or account exec or something or anything that people can relate to in your industry and it helps them or consultant or sales consultant, that's fine provided internally they know they need to bring in sales. Okay, so those are the three things that will help you to um, hire and keep the top sales people. How to tell, a quick way of trying to tell is that this person is not a great salesperson. Number one is they do not have a job. A good salesperson has got a job. I know this sounds mean, like, oh, but what if somebody needs another job? But in reality, if somebody is good at sales, they are working somewhere else. They are doing stuff. The good ones are taken? Yes, the good ones are taken. Okay, the good ones are taken. The good salespeople are working. Good salespeople have got a job. Good salespeople... Well, so meaning if you're a salesperson right now and you're watching this, you're like, oh, but how am I going to get a job if I don't have a job? You need to offer a service to somebody and to, you can start out on commission to start, but that makes you be, uh, you will have a job and people know that people are good have a job because you are adding value. And if you're saying I be, I'm in sales and I haven't had a job for six months, I haven't had a job for one year or two years, it's like, how good are you really that you, cannot sell yourself to a company and how confident are you in your sales if you cannot even take a job on commission so you can start it start out like that on commission and then build out and then you can get another job okay so it's like again it's like here's a, it's also like relationships okay <laughs> it's like when you're single it's very hard to get into any relationship or get something from somebody like how, how long have you been single i've been single for Four years, like four years, subconsciously just says, mm, I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay. But when you have somebody, another person, it's, it's easier to get to another relationship. But when you're married, even more, much easier. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, relationship advice, sales advice, it says it's similar, similar. Okay. So, number one, how to tell they do not have a job. So, then how do you get people if they all have jobs. So you look out for salespeople. You, you, sometimes you, in your encounters, you find um, somebody that's serving you and they're really good at sales. You can invite them to, to join your company. So you push them, headhunt them to get you, join your company. You go to LinkedIn, you can look for salespeople there. And then you go to companies like Job Crystal and 
you 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 that's job crystal to help you hire salespeople and a lot of the good salespeople will already be in a job and they want to move to better better and greener pasture cool number two they cannot handle your objection okay this is an easy one easy one to do i love doing this when i'm hiring salespeople uh, after i interview them and we've spoken for a while and then I give them an objection. I ask them, like, how good are you handling objections? They're um, really good. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, cool. Then I ask a few other questions. Then afterwards, I say, you know what? Based on what you've given me and your experience, and I don't think you're a good fit for our company and what we're trying to do. So I don't think this will work. And then pause. I have seen one person just pack their, close their book and look. Okay, thank you very much, sir. And they walked. Imagine, one objection. You have to sing, I'm really good at the objection handling. One objection, and they closed their book and left the interview. Wow. Okay, so it's not what they say, it's what they do. And then another one, actually, this one was a little sad because, uh, you know what, based on your experience and what we're doing, I don't think it's a good fit, so I don't think this will work. Thank you very much for your time. And then she just burst out tears. Then I had to tell her, like, look, this, I'm giving you an objection. You kept me up. You said you can handle objections. I said, oh, okay, okay. But again, it was something that they say they can do, but they cannot in reality. Then this other guy was a rock star. This rock star, I gave him the same exact objection. And then what he did, he just he took a sip of water and says, you tell me more, like why you think that I'm not a good fit for your company. Now he's like interviewing me. Now it's not saying, oh, because of this, because of that. He says, no, oh, but I've got experience in that and I've done this and I've done this. And then for your company, I can learn this. This is the only thing I need to learn here is this and that. And if I get that training, I'm sure I can sell. And I'm like, cool, that's good. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm a good candidate for your company. It's like, wow, he just handled my objection and closed me. Like, so I think we could get started. Like, yeah, I think we could, right? So this is this is the second way in which you can just tell quickly if somebody is mediocre or good. We'll have Sasha note from Job Crystal. In the meantime, before Sasha, I'll listen. We'll listen to one of uh, Primary Game Changers talking about what we do at Primary. Hi, my name is Ego and I'm the CEO and co-founder of The Good Mineral. I absolutely love what the Pranery is about. It is a school, a practical school for entrepreneurs. So no writing, no, you know, theories, more about exactly what is going to be needed to get you to the next level and get you that funding that you need. My name is Evelyn Kaingo and I'm the CEO at Lupia. And uh, Lupia is a digital bank that's providing financial solutions for emerging markets. And so we are focused on providing uh, lending solutions for individuals and small businesses. Uh, we're also, uh, we also also create investment opportunities uh, on a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform, uh, provide uh, virtual card solutions uh, for individuals who would like to pay for things online and uh, use a payment uh, card system. I'd like to say yeah. it's one business model to okay. So what I would say about plenary is um, I'll call it a business uh, toolkit. That's a very, that's a necessity for a growing or a growth stage business. Uh, just because as a founder, you carry the vision and once uh, your idea has been enacted, what happens next into making sure that your growth strategy is implemented in a way that you wanna impact people or to actually reach uh, the people that you intended the product to before. And so I would say it's a guide, a toolkit that an entrepreneur needs to make sure that they can enact on their growth strategy and, uh, and really ensure a real impact. Fantastic, fantastic. That is uh, Ego from the Good Mineral. You find a Good Mineral in South Africa. Uh, it's in uh, Woolies and then also in the USA. And then Lupia from Zambia, although it's from Zambia, not Lupia, obviously. And it's super cool. Now we got Sasha, Sasha Nuts from Job Crystal, another game changer. Hi, Sasha. Hi. Fantastic. How are you doing, Sasha? Very well, and you, Sandra? 
I'm very well, thanks. So, Sasha, I think, yeah, t- tell us about your business. Tell us about Job Crystal. Uh, so, Job Crystal, we pretty much do recruitment, and what we do is we do it well. Um, we figured out that using AI uh, speeds up the, the recruiting process and makes us be able to look at a bigger, broader base of candidates. Um, and how to hire fast. And we generally focus on SMEs and getting them to hire better, faster, and more cost-effectively. Fantastic. What are some of the recruitment tips that you would give business owners? And what are the questions that they generally ask you? Yeah, so I was having a look at your at your slides. It's really interesting. A lot of them are, are the same. Um, some extra kind of tricks when you're asking specifically for sales you want people to join that are in your industry um don't think they're going to bring the big book and they're going to sell to all their old customers but you definitely want them to know the industry they'll at least have inroads and they can kind of hit the ground running um so that's kind of a big thing that we've learned on the sales side is don't hire somebody who's not in your industry um and then commission is obviously really important for salespeople. but the one thing you want to bring in is a different type of level of salary so give them a base salary but give them kind of a bonus structure that if they do X, Y, and Z, contact 50 leads, do 25 calls and 25 visits, they can also get something based on not just closing the sale. Because sometimes you need the seeds planted and to keep the sales guys motivated. Um, so we found that definitely helps a lot. Um, and then you were obviously saying that the telltale signs, love those. Um, but the one thing that we've actually, it was great about your objection handling, I have to try that. Uh, but the other thing is, if they don't negotiate their own salary, there's a warning bell. So if you make them an offer and you make it lower on purpose and they go and they sign it, there's a red flag there. You need to figure out, they should be asking, our best sales guys always negotiate their salary because that's what they're, that's what they're born and bred to do. So I hope those help. Fantastic. And uh, we'll take questions from the audience. Like anybody who's got questions, just type in the chat box. Great. And in your case, Sasha, what are the other things that small business owners make? So maybe not even just re- re- um, uh, limited to hiring salespeople, just hiring in general. What are the mistakes that they make and what advice would you have? In so general? I think often you know, SMEs hire people from the corporate world. And unfortunately, corporate world is so used to a big team behind them um, so be careful try and hire somebody from also from a startup environment they've got a little bit more grits and a little bit more hard work than a corporate environment so so that's a big tip for an SME and the first person you hire should probably be an admin person you need somebody who can do lots of and, and block lots of holes for you and start them out so we started out our first admin person on a half day and then she joined us full time and then we got another one so you don't have to we don't often have big budgets so Start with a VA, a virtual assistant, and then grow that um, as your business grows. Fantastic. Thanks. Um, there's a question from Owen Francis saying, do you have a suggestion for, for COM as commodity sales versus solutions sales? sales. Yeah. So that's, kind of sales where, that's where we do the bonus versus commission. So, so solution sales, most SaaS software has got a longer sales cycle. So that's why we give you a base salary. We give you a bonus. So if you, you know, you still contact hundred leads, you still doing drops, you are still doing some automated uh, campaigns and it's not landing because it's a long sales cycle, at least they're still motivated to keep planting those seeds. So I would definitely do a bonus and then commission when you close. So it's, it's almost a three, a three part structure. So I hope that helps with you with common versus long sales cycles. Great. Another question is when people, uh, when you're hiring, um, what, is it advisable just hire one person or hire multiple people when you're just starting out? I always say hire, hire one because you, you need to see how that goes. Um, but having said that, so we're a little bit bigger now than we were in our, in our first stages. And we've actually hired three salespeople and all three different salespeople. And we know that all won't last. Um, and we've done that on purpose because one's very much a phone person, one's a face-to-face person, one's an automated person. And we want to see what's going to work. Because for me, selling, I've sold on face-to-face and phone and automated. And I want to see which one will work better in a bigger format. So we've actually hired three of the same role to see what works. So in the beginning, one person, a little bit later, hire more than one at the same time. Brilliant. Awesome. 
how do people find you? Which markets do you serve? So currently South Africa and Eswatini. Uh, we're on jobcrystal.co.za uh, that you can go and find us. Uh, but we're hoping in November to go global. So watch the space. Fantastic. South Africa and Eswatini. I'm going to Eswatini next week, actually. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Sasha, for joining us today. Um, <laughs> great. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody. And for those of you who are who are business owners and they would like to get more of this type of coaching information, we've got the new program at Primary. It's called the Biggest Game Coaching Program. This is for businesses that are doing at least uh, $50,000 per year and in South Africa it's like at least a million rand per year and they want to grow so we have a program specifically for that it's called the biggest game coaching program and with this one it helps you to increase your leadership increase your revenue and increase your impact so right now we invite in anybody who's got a business like that and they want to learn more about it you can apply and get a free trial of the program. And what we do is we'll help you free up your time. We'll help you to 10x your results in a year. And then we also help you manage like your, your, your sales and as well as your team and freeing up your time. So we specifically um, look at those type of businesses because a lot of them have got issue of, I can't find good people. And then... And to find the good people, in fact, I, I can't afford them, right? Or when you afford them, it says, I've got no time to train them. And so we teach you exactly how to do that. And then we've structured this program such a way that you, on, you get coaching from me, but you also get coaching from other game changers and other guests that come in from time to time. And why are we doing this at Pranary? It's because we want to help build great companies. And a lot of businesses, business owners are frustrated. Like my business is not at the point where I want it to be. And actually I built my business because I wanted more time and determine my income and all of that. But the reality is different. Like actually now I'm working harder. I'm worried about income. I just now have just lots of people that I'm responsible for. And I am actually stressed. And then there's also that feeling of, should I get a job? And I'm like, ah, but no, I don't want to do that. But, and then there's that place where you're kind of like struggling and then when somebody says let's grow your business it feels like you are just multiplying your headache but that's not um, what you started your business for so right now in the biggest game coaching program we help you with that freeing up your time so and knowing where you are what level and growing your business so uh, click on that link and to that link you also find it on primary.com and apply for your free trial we look forward to having you and helping you grow your business.